I've just finished up with the Arcad 25 official launch party here in Australia. And even though it was an online event this year, it was definitely something to be excited about. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about Archicad 25, the brand new 2021 edition. It is the anniversary edition. It marks a quarter of a century of Archicad products that have come out and we've celebrated across the years. The 25th edition really does focus on do more, be more, and do it together. Overall, it is a pretty major upgrade and we're gonna get into the little nitty gritties in a minute. However, for those of you just wondering when it's coming out, Archicad 25 is technically officially available, but if you are a MyCAD Image subscriber or a CI Tools member here in Australia, it's officially released on the 12th of July, 2021. Many of the updates that they showcased today during the live launch event as well will be coming later on in the year. They won't be immediately rolled out with our kid 25, which is a little bit disappointing, but you have to take some good with the bad and know that there's more good things coming on later down the track. So let's get right into it with the brand new features of Arcad 25 and wrap it up at the end with my personal opinion of what you should do between Arcad 24 and Arcad 25 if you have the ability to upgrade. So one of the first and prominent features showcased in Arcad 25 was the upgrade of a selection tool. Usually in a 3D window, you would find a 3D object and you could select it, but then you'd have to go back into 2D to find out where that was again, and you'd spend quite a bit of time going between 2D, 3D, just figuring out where these objects are. Basically, now what they've done is provided a brand new selection tool. You click on one wall and you can automatically find it in 3D, or if you're in 3D, you can do vice versa and you can automatically find it in 2D. To add to the mix of this, you can also hide your selections by right clicking, going down to hide selections and it'll automatically hide everything that you've clicked on. So this is definitely gonna be a useful feature if you've got a wall in the way, if you've got an object in the way or anything in the way that has really been troubling you in the past. You don't have to turn off layers, you don't have to mask things, you don't have to delete things. It's just a lot easier now and something that probably should have come in at a lot earlier stage. ArchiCAD 25 has focused a lot on improving the updates in ArchiCAD 24. Personally speaking, ArchiCAD 24 was a major upgrade. ArchiCAD 25 is still a major upgrade, but I don't think they implemented as much as they did in 24. So one of the tools that they implemented in 24 was the openings tool. It allowed you to create pretty much any opening that you wanted, except you didn't actually have the ability to freely customize it. Now they've introduced the polygonal opening tool, which basically allows you to cut any shape that you want by using the opening tool. There isn't much more to it. It's a very simple tool upgrade, but it is definitely gonna be beneficial to most users using our CAD 25. Something that I am actually genuinely excited about and happy to see introduced into ArcCAD 25 is the photorealistic textures being introduced into 2D as well as 3D. So previously you could add textures and surfaces to your materials and you could have a brick wall shown as a brick wall in 3D. However, when you convert it into 2D, it wouldn't be really showcasing that majestic feel that you're probably looking for. You'd have to take all your 2Ds into Photoshop implement some textures over the top and waste a little bit of time basically in Photoshop to do what you can do now in ArcCAD 25. By simply changing a few settings here and there, you can quickly reintroduce all of those surface 3D textures into a 2D section or a 2D internal elevation that you can then showcase to your clients. It also lets you introduce shadows and distance markers into these sections and elevations, which makes it look even more realistic. Now, personally speaking, these textures probably aren't as good as what you can do in Photoshop, but for the simple fact that you can create them and save yourself a significant amount of time, it might just well be the quickest and easiest way to do it for some projects. Something I personally really enjoyed in the ArcCAD 24 upgrade was the new architectural furniture package. Now, in ArcCAD 25, they've taken that to the next level, and I'm really happy to see that because I'm very much over using the old architectural furniture. The best thing about the new package is it is mainly kitchen and living room based. So there is a whole new suite of cabinetry details. I believe it's 21 new cabinetry modules that are brand new and fully parametric. That means you can adjust whatever you want, height, width, length, different uh, door handles, different kick plates, different 
um, bench tops, you can change whatever you want very, very quickly. Now, obviously, Archicad did have this previously, but they've basically just expanded on it in a much more significant and really required way. With the furniture, I kind of got the sense that they were stealing a little bit from Ikea's furniture catalog. They have taken a lot of the popular furniture you see from Ikea and kind of introduced it into Archicad, which don't get me wrong, is fantastic because the furniture in Archicad is terrible. So the new introduction of this is fantastic. There's simple things like futons that have been introduced and different dining room tables and beanbag chairs. So they're definitely moving more into this designer trend and the younger market more so than your traditional boxy, very old school architectural furniture. Now, unlike Arcad 24, they didn't focus so much on BIM and collaboration, but they have had some serious upgrades. I won't go into too much detail into the BIM cloud because most of the features that they showcased aren't actually available just yet. For example, they're gonna be introducing BIMX onto the BIM cloud so you can automatically link your BIMX model to the BIM cloud. Fantastic, but I can't actually test it out, showcase it and do anything until it's brought out an update later on this year. If you're using Archicad, you're more than likely also running a Mac operating system. You'll be happy to know that they've replaced the OpenGL software with the new Metal Framework. Theoretically, meant to be significantly quicker and perform a lot better, but unfortunately, it isn't something we can test fully just yet. If you're a Rhino user, on the other hand, they've introduced functionality and support for Rhino 6 and 7, which means if you're using the Ladybug plugin, for example, and doing shadow or energy analysis, you really now can import that data directly into ArchiCAD and really streamline your process so much better than you ever could before. Now, one feature that they did showcase and unfortunately state that it is coming later this year is the parametric shift moving over from the current rendering software to Redshift. Now, I've personally taken a look into Redshift in the past. It runs side by side with Cinema 4D fantastically and flawlessly, and it is exceptional. So overall, what are my thoughts on Arcad 25? Well, personally, I've been using Arcad 24 for the last 12 months, ever since it came out. It was a fantastic upgrade. It was a huge stepping stone from Arcad 23 and an even bigger stepping stone from Arcad 21, which was the transition that I made. So Archicad 24 versus Archicad 25, is there enough of a justifiable difference to upgrade? If you're having to pay the premium, which I think is a couple thousand dollars to upgrade, I'm not entirely sure, I'm not entirely convinced. If you're running a large scale firm and you're constantly migrating new projects across and you have a libraries manager and a template manager who's constantly gonna be able to spend some time on this to transition it from 24 to 25, yes, definitely, you don't wanna be left behind and have your projects be out of date. However, if you're a very small firm, a very niche firm, I'm not 100% convinced that there is enough justifiable upgrade features to take 24 to 25. I don't think I'd personally be spending the money to jump to 25 unless I had it. If I did have the money, yes, 100%, I always recommend staying to the latest software and migrating your libraries across, migrating your templates across, because it's so much easier to migrate from one upgrade than it is from two, and especially when you go past two, it's just a nightmare upgrading templates and libraries. Personally, I will be upgrading to the ArcCAD 25 library because it's gonna save so much time with the 3D photorealistic renders and hatches that are allowed in 2D and sectional views now. So this is just gonna be a time saver for all sorts of statutory regulations and requirements. So this is gonna be a great addition. That couple thousand dollar investment is gonna save so much time in the back end that it's basically gonna pay off the investment very quickly. That one feature alone makes ArchiCAD 25 a justifiable upgrade, in my opinion. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a good recap of the ArchiCAD 25 launch event. I will be reviewing it in more detail when I get a decent amount of time to actually sit down and play with the software. I don't wanna give you my opinion on the software until I've actually genuinely used it for at least a couple weeks, preferably a month or two. I think that video will be coming a little bit later this year. So if you do wanna see that, or if you wanna know anything more about the Mac side of things, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button as well to help this video with the YouTube algorithm. And because you guys wanted this video to come out as quickly as possible and as soon as this information was available to me, it goes live ASAP as soon as I finish editing it basically. 
Unfortunately, there will be no video on Monday as a result, so it will be one and a couple days till you see me again. But that video is gonna be great. I've already planned it out. I've already recorded most of it. And so far, I do think you're gonna enjoy it. And I'll see you next, next Monday.